Hello, everyone. It's me, Andrew. I'm here at Star Cottage Studio, and hopefully you all have been having a good start to your week so far. Uh, it's been busy, busy, busy today. I don't think I've ever said it's not been a busy day. Um, if you're tuning in, let me know and say hello and maybe where you're tuning in from. It's always nice to see where everybody's watching. I always enjoy that. Um, so yeah, so today is kind of a back to normal, trying to get back into the swing of, um, of doing these Tuesday tutorials. The past couple times that I've been on, I've been showing more of the things that I've been working on as opposed to showing a project. So hopefully you all um, enjoyed that. Um, but yeah, let's get back into making things. So hopefully you all are doing well. Um, I see a couple people are watching. Facebook user says, hello, beautiful soul. Hello, Facebook user. Um, and if you get a chance, go to the StreamYard link in the description of this video. And you can click on that. And if you click on that, then you can register. And then I can see who Facebook user is. Sometimes I can't see. And sometimes you have to do it more uh, than once. You have to do it every time there's like an update. So annoying, I know. Um, Marion says, hello. Howdy. Oh, from Smoky Edmonton. Hopefully everything's not too bad there. Um, Christy Lee, howdy. All right, so we've had a busy day today. Um, I went and I did my civic duty and I voted. Um, hopefully, if you are able to vote, you're, you either did or will go and vote. Um, I know that not everybody agrees, but I always think that it's good that everybody turns up and casts their vote. Um, you know, uh, it's important, I think. Norma's watching. Hey, Norma. June's watching. Hey, June. Susie's watching. Hey, Susie. Uh, yeah, so after we voted, I got asked to do some promo things for the Metal Museum. If you did not know, um, in June, coming up pretty soon, uh, one of my pieces, one of my portrait pieces, is headed over to Memphis to be in a show called We Are Here at the Metals Museum. Uh, we're planning to go to the opening. So if you are in Memphis or you want to check out the Metals Museum, uh, you should definitely stop by when we're going to be there because that would be nice. Um, I don't know who all is going to be there, um, so we'll see. Yeah, we've got some logistical planning to do. Um, and I should, that's a good point, a good segue into saying if you're a local and you are looking for a sometimes maybe part time kind of gig, fill in, shop sitter gig, uh, let us know. And you can email us at info at allegorygallery.com. Um, because whenever we go away, it's a little bit stressful because we've been running on a, a skeleton crew, AKA mostly just William. And um, yeah, it's it's kind of thrown a wrench in some of our plans. So go on ahead if you're local and looking for something. Um, we're pretty easy going and laid back. Um, so if you're looking for a fun and kind of creative opportunity to, uh, you know, help out, let us know, because that would be super. Um, it would free up. Um, we've been trying to do um, plan for some more YouTube videos that I film, and that's going to be on Mondays usually, but um, we haven't really gotten a chance to do that yet because um, we're both working, so it's hard to do that. So, we will get back into the swing of things, um, you know, if we can get find some extra help. Either that or we're going to have to close on Mondays. I hate to do that. Um, I know 
other places in this world are not open seven days a week or even six days a week um, or even, you know, five days a week sometimes. So it's just, we're just having to figure things out. So hopefully we'll find somebody um, so that it can free us up to do some other things. And in, after we get the new space up and running in Johnstown, I'm probably going to be back at the shop uh, two days a week. I don't know why I volunteered that, but um, two days a week. So I'll be back Tuesdays and Wednesdays, probably. So then you'll see me from, from the shop, maybe. A couple more folks have tuned in. Kay's watching. Hey, Kay. Amanda's watching. Hey, Amanda. Harry's watching. Hey, Harry. Um, and Cheryl's watching. Um, yeah, so um, we're trying to figure out how we can get our workflow kind of situated so that we can do all of the things, all of the things. And of course, it's always tricky when um, you want to do a lot, but you don't have a lot of funds to do it. So um, so it's been a, a kind of a weird balancing act. But we're, we're, we're doing it, knock on wood. We're in um, cases, if I were nearby, I'd help you guys out. Well, thank you. Yeah, that would be fun. I would love it if we could all be together all the time. Well, maybe not all the time. Because I like to have my private time, but not like that kind of private time. But um, I don't know. I need time to recharge. And I feel like um, if I'm in too much close quarters with people, sometimes even if I love those people, it becomes frantic time. I don't know if you all are like that or not, um, but I have to take time for myself. Otherwise, it makes the crazy so, yeah. So, cases okay, it's tricky when you don't have the head count either. Um, for people coming in into the shop, I don't know. Um, yeah, it's always hard to anticipate um, things like that because one of the things. Uh, that we're having an issue with is our foot traffic is way down in the shop. So it, it's hard to hire somebody when you know where you can, it's, it's either it's a really good day or a really terrible day. So it's hard to hire or ask somebody to come and help out when nobody comes in and then you're like getting the hives because you can't pay people. Um, case okay, so dude, you just described my life for the past three years. I'm going crazy. Yeah, I, um, sometimes I'll travel with folks and I like to travel with people. It's nice because we, um, we all have different things that we can see and appreciate and some things that I probably would not have done. They've inspired me to do or, to be more relaxed because I'm one of those people when I travel, I'm like, let's do this, 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 this. And then sometimes when I was like, let's just kind of relax. And so sometimes that's good to relax. I like to squeeze as much in. I'm like, I'm going to get the most out of this as possible. Well, actually not really like that, but I like to do a lot of stuff when I'm in a new place. Um, but anyway, so it's nice to travel with people, but I, I did um, the last uh, trip that I took with some people. I had to like hide in the bathroom late at night and they probably thought I had some digestive issues, but I tried to wait until people were all asleep um, so that I could just have like some moments to be Zen and just like uh, think about my day and process and kind of recoup the energy. Um, so yeah, Amanda says, it really is, Norma. The leaves are fully out. Um, my big maple out back, and it's a beautiful blowing in the breeze. It's beautiful, so beautiful blowing in the breeze. Oh, because you were talking about how nice it is, the weather. 
Um, case of no, I mean, headcount is for finding reliable people to work. Um, you know, we've been super lucky in the past where we've had a lot of really wonderful people come and help out. Um, and if we, I wish that we could just like keep everybody for all forever and always, but, um, yeah, that's not always possible. Um, Carmen's watching. Hey, Carmen. Um, okay. says, I am known to wander off by myself when I go places with people. My family and friends have learned to accept that wholeheartedly. Oh, good. Um, usually if I do that, it causes like the panic and people are like, where are you? We, how come you turned your phone thing off or, you know, it, it make, uh, so yeah, no. Um, all right. So that's coming up in June. I think the opening is on Sunday, June, is it June 3rd or June 4th is the Sunday. I can't remember, but it's that Sunday, that first Sunday in June. And we'll be in Memphis. So if you want to hang out, come by and see us. And that'll be fun. You can see my my little self-portrait brooch in person. Um, and then uh, next, this, I was like next weekend, but next weekend is this weekend coming up. I'm going to be doing a talk at Touchstone. It's the Snag at Touchstone event. It's the first inaugural inaugural event there. So um, I'm excited. I'm nervous a little bit. Um, I'm not a real blacksmith and I've only been doing metal smithing seriously for the past few years, even though I've been making jewelry um, and have been involved in the jewelry making industry for over 20, um, I've only really been seriously doing metal smithing um, and blacksmithing for the past two or three years. So it's a little bit high pressure when some of the people who are gonna be in the audience are people who are like the who's who of both fields. So I'm sure it will be fine and I'll make it work. But this whole week leading up to the event, we are going to A, clean the house. Y'all, I can't even, I'm getting, I get nervous, nervous time when I'm in the house now. It's starting to close in. And that says a lot if I'm saying that. Um, but anyway, so we're gonna be doing that and also getting ready um, for the event. So I'm gonna try to make a couple new things. I don't know how it's gonna work. Um, we're super, super busy this week. It always seems like I block out time where I definitely should be focusing on getting ready for something. And for some reason, those weeks are the weeks that get the most busy. Or do you have that where, I think I should stop planning times of where I need to work because um, invariably something always encroaches. Like I had this thing where it's like, I'm gonna have five whole days, two weeks of time where I'm just, all I'm gonna do is this work for this project. And then they're like, somebody's like, I need this, I need this. And then so I'm over there running around. So anyways, um, we're getting ready for that. If you haven't registered for that, it's probably too late, but if you contact Brianne, at snag and say, hey, I'd really like to go. Can I go? Um, she probably will, will try to accommodate you. Um, the more the merrier, in my opinion. Um, they did not get the registration numbers that they were hoping for. Uh, so it's a little bit sad, but um, it's always a gamble, especially um, especially post COVID. Like before COVID, Whenever we planned in-person events, I was pretty, I could reliably count on this many XYZ people attending certain events. And now I just don't know. Like part of me thinks people would be eager to be out and about, but then also I know there's still some concerns about that. Um, and just in-person events in general have been hit or miss. I mean, in the store, we used to know that so certain people would come in on certain days and we could kind of plan around everything. And now who knows? Some it's, it's like, I don't know. Have you seen that meme with that little girl, the little Asian girl on the, um, 
on the teacup ride or on the and they're like you think spiritual enlightening enlightenment it's gonna be all sweet and and loving and then they're and then they show her like screaming and holding on for dear life um but also laughing and enjoying it but also clearly terrified so it's kind of like that so there's like wonderful 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 things and then also you're like thunderstruck um so yeah um one of the other things that just happened that i should remind people about is that if you did not see the video um on our youtube channel with jen definitely check that out she does the sunday tutorials and does a really wonderful job i think um so we're super lucky to have her and have her be able to do them uh and then for us howdy okay bye, bye. William stopped by after his other job. He's running up to, can I tell them? He's already left. Um, so he's getting that 360 camera um, that he mentioned in his live yesterday. And that will help um, with our Google listings and um, with some other stuff, I don't know, documenting the 360 of things. I, when it comes to technology, I don't want to sound, sound like a Luddite or whatever, but um, sometimes I'm just like, I don't, I don't know. Just tell me how it works and how it's going to benefit my life. And, or don't actually tell me how it works a lot of times. Just as long as it does something cool, then I don't really care. Um, but anyway, so he's going and running up to do that and dropping off a package um, that somebody needs it. So, um, yeah, so he's doing that running, 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 running um, from his other job up to here to over uh, Pittsburgh way. Um, anyways, I see a couple people who have said some things. Um, Harry says, it's 79 and sunny here. I had two new feral cats show up for breakfast. Oh, that's cute. Where our kittens should be ready at the end of the month. So we're excited for that, but also we have to clean the house for that. Um, Norma says that it's rainy there today, but it's okay. They needed it, and it was a little warm from May, so it helped cool things off. Well, that's good. Um, Kay say, hey, I want to order another of your abstract rugs for my art space. I forgot the site info to order it from. Um, is it Society6? I can drop a link after I get off. But thank you. That would be super nice. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I haven't really been promoting Society6 as much. Um, just because you can, you work really hard and you get such a small percentage, which is fine if you have like a big operation and you have lots of multiple revenue streams coming in. I just wasn't able to get it to make enough money that I could take away from other things. But they're they're all still up there. That Society Six. Um, it's a little tricky to look for my name. Um, cause all kinds of random stuff comes up. Um, but I'll drop a link after the video on Facebook cause I see you're watching from Facebook. So I'll do that. And she's, Kay also says, you will shine. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. Uh, you know, I'm kind of at the point where it will be what it'll be. Um, I'm one of those people who I put a lot of pressure on myself because that's kind of the cultural conditioning that I was raised with. Always do like the best you can and always do the most and go out of your way to always do, you know, as much as you can. Um, so we'll see how that works out, you know. Um, I'm trying to unlearn a lot of stuff, but it's tricky. Um, oh, Suzanne is watching. Howdy. Um, I'm excited. Um, Queer Eye, the new season of that came out. It's in New Orleans. So um, I think Georgia is in the season. So I'm going to 
I'm excited to see that. Um, I don't know if it got cut out or if it's still in there or not, but I think that they went over to her shop. Maybe I'll see you in the background. Um, Kay says, I'm good with out and about in person as long as people respect that I still wear a mask in enclosed spaces. It's probably good um, to still do that. I kind of have stopped doing that, but um, I used to be really super vigilant about it. Um, but then I got like triple boosted. So who knows? Probably quadruple at this point. Um, and then cases hi and bye, William. Um, all right. So I mentioned watching the videos on YouTube with Jen because that's super cool. She came out with some nice projects and um, normally they would be filming tonight, but um, they had a baseball game. So that's why I'm here instead of at the house. So it's been a while since I've done a live from, from the cottage, Star Cottage Studio. So it's kind of weird being back, but in a nice way. Um, so then also I wanted to mention that we kind of reconfigured the storyteller um, section. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, I created a series of little small scale affordable artwork um, that will help pay for some of my upcoming classes and has helped paid for one class already. Um, and to get new equipment for Star Card Studio so that after the classes, I can still keep working instead of, you know, I don't know, you kind of, you know, it's, it's like that, what they say, practice makes perfect. And if you don't practice, then you can get rusty in between. So I need to practice. And so I got, um, we're saving up for some equipment so that I can keep going even after the classes are done. Um, and so anyway, so that Storyteller collection is uh, live now on the website. Um, that's allegorygallery.com. And William has hidden all of the sold out ones because people were like, oh, I'm so frustrated. I can't find the one that I was looking for. They're all sold out. And the way they had populated, I guess they're their, the how they saw things, um, it was showing everything sold out. So um, he made some adjustments to the website. So now the ones that are not sold come up first. And I think the ones that are sold have are hidden. So if you wanna see that, head on over to allegorygallery.com and check out what's left. Um, I'm very proud of those pieces. And I also wanted to say thank you so much to everybody who got one or more of my pieces. Um, it really means a lot to me. Uh, I always wanted to continue with my education, but at some points um, it becomes harder when you get more responsibilities and obligations. So it's super, I'm super grateful for everybody who kind of got one of my pieces or, and, um, yeah, I think it's nice. It's also nice when people want to have your work and uh, it's a good feeling. So thank you. Bonnie says, OMG, I fell asleep this afternoon and just woke up and you're on. Hello. Hi, Bonnie. Yeah. So yeah, we're here. Um, all right. So let's get started. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. Are you ready? Who's ready? Who's ready? Um, yeah. All right, so let me flip this around. Kay says, do you uh, still have the flying angels that are hanging from the ceiling at the gallery? I want one. Yes, we do have a bunch of them. Um, what is probably the best and easiest thing to do is to email us at info at allegorygallery.com. And you can uh, schedule a store tour with William and he can help guide you to picking up the one that you want. Um, Cause I'm not at the store, so it's hard for me to show anything. 
Um, I do have stuff here, but anyways, but there it's not the same thing. All right, let me flip things around. If I seems like oh, whenever I'm doing this, it's like for the very first time again. One day will be fancy. All right, so if you didn't see, um, we went and did our global adventure in Turkey this time, and we have all these uh, um, Eye of Protection inspired beads. Now, I'm not going to say that these are all from Turkey. Even though I went through a Turkish vendor, when we got the packaging, some of the packaging said made in China, even though we went through a Turkish company. So I think they designed the beads and had um, a manufacturing partner in China make some of them. So I hate to, I don't want to misrepresent and say that these are all from Turkey. Um, they may have taken a pit stop in Turkey or started off in Turkey and then, but I, I just want to be completely transparent about that. There is still really cool. And I think we have a nice cool selection of these beads. I love them. Let me dump them out so that we can see them and enjoy them because I think that they're pretty cool. All right, take a look, y'all. And I try to stay and I um, build the color palette for this. Um, the new global adventure for next month will be coming out soon. Um, and the um, monthly design challenge mix is going to come out pretty soon as well. So keep an eye out for those. Um, probably within the next couple days or so. William has his class tomorrow night, his ceramics class. So um, I'll be back on tomorrow with another something or another. Um, and it, I should also mention, if there's something that you want to see, let me know. Um, because I don't always know. I'm like, I, I, wanna, I don't know what people want to see. So this is the mix. I like it. I hope people like it. Bonnie says, my brother-in-law just got back from Turkey. Can't wait to talk with him about his trip. Oh, good. Yeah, so we'll be using beads from this. These ones are polymer, but there's glass in there. And there's also ceramic. I don't see any of the ceramic ones, but they're, they're in the original mix. Uh, this one's ceramic. So um, it's a cool mix, I think. Um, if you don't want to use these in your your piece, you can definitely swap these out for other beads um, for today's project. So today's project is pretty simple. I've shown variations of this before, but I thought it would be nice to talk about it again, um, just in case you wanted to see that again, and to use these. So... Um, let me get things started. I am missing my heavy duty cutters. I'll be right back, y'all. Um, Um, we did our lot before, before Turkey was India, but we didn't have the fancy mirrors. We had the Indian foil glass. I think there is still a, um, Kay said, please do a global adventure from India. Um, we did, um, one in India, but we didn't have those beads. Um, maybe we'll circle back around, but the world is pretty big. So, we'll, who knows where we're going to go next? Actually, I know where we're going to go next, but. Um, yeah.
One of the things that I hope to do is to um, get things kind of sorted out and situated here at the cottage because everything is kind of wackadoodle. Here's that mix, by the way. Um, the India mix. All right, so for today's project, I've got some brass or bronze wire. This is really heavy gauge wire. This is 10 gauge bronze wire. So we're going to get the big heavy duty cutters. These are cheapy cutters that I got from the hardware store. Do not, do not, do not, do not use your fine tipped cutters for this part. Um, if you do, then these will be garbage. So use heavy duty cutters, or if you want, you can get the jeweler saw out and get that on there and it will make it so much easier and it will preserve your tools. Um, big, uh, fancy cutters, you know, anywhere from 30 to $120. And they're very precision made, very, um, there's a lot of attention to detail to those things. And a saw blade is like 10 cents. So go and use a jeweler saw or get these, um, raid the garage and get these kind of work a day um, cutters, bolt cutters, and it will be good, better, I should say, so that they don't ruin any of the fancy cutters. All right. So we'll need these to start. We'll also need our global adventure mix. And then I also got this 24 gauge brass wire. Um, I, I sometimes vacillate between using brass and bronze. You can see the difference. This has a more orangey, warmer tone, and this has more of a greenish hue to it. Um, I, I don't know. I just kind of have, I, I just use this one because I have a lot of it. Um, 24 gauge. Um, you can go finer, but I wouldn't go too, too much fine because you do want it to have structural integrity. And then I have different hammers here. This is a chasing hammer, cheapy deepy one. You can see it probably needs a little attention so that it doesn't fly off. Um, and by that, what I mean by attention is um, you can soak these in linseed oil and it helps swell the wood. I saw somebody say that you can put it in water. The problem with using water is that this is steel and it can start rusting almost immediately. So um, if you do have this, soak it in linseed oil and that wood will soak up the linseed oil and swell and create a tighter fit. If you're still having problems, you can take this little wedge out. There's a little metal wedge. Um, and you can put a thicker wedge in um, or put another wedge in to help it flare out and make sure that it's not super wobbly. wobbly. And then these ones, they're not, they're called, now that's a hammer. These are from Frets. They're kind of spendy, but my friend Brenda, she designed them. Um, so I want to show some love for her. And I think they're really wonderful. And if you want, you can use them as stakes also. I've never used that and I'm obsessed with stakes. So I should probably bust out the vise and then put them in the vise and then go to town. And then for um, cutting and manipulating the wire, uh, the smaller this uh, gauge, I've got these cutters. I also have some round nose pliers and some chain nose pliers. And I'm going to use those to manipulate the wire. And then I also have some files. Now, I recommend having some files if you're going to do any kind of metal stuff, uh, just so that you don't accidentally get any sharp parts. And it's always good to have a variety of sandpaper as well. Um, whenever you're looking for sandpaper, get the wet dry sandpaper and you can use that um, to help you 
so that you don't breathe in a bunch of dust. And if you are gonna do a lot of sanding, wear a mask or a respirator. It will help your lungs. You don't want that to go into your nose hole and give you problems later. It may not cause a problem now, but with so many things, it can be cumulative. So you don't wanna have any problems later on, all right? Um, okay, so fret hammers are top notch. Yeah, I like them. I once you fall down the rabbit hole of hammers, though, you'll um, you'll see. Um, cases are the files from the hardware store too. No, this one is from Vintage. We I think we sell these at the shop, um, and then this one I got at a yard sale. Um, and I have a bunch of different files. So there's needle nose files, there's um, there's Swiss pattern, there's all different kinds of files for all different purposes. And mostly um, this one is kind of aggressive for small scale stuff. So I like it to remove um, work or remove excess quickly. And then this file, is a little bit of a smoother file and um, and it helps kind of finesse things, all right? Um, but you'd be surprised what you can find uh, at the hardware store. If you are, or even, you know, if you have a great flea market, if you can find Nicholson files, um, those are really great. Um, and if you get files that are clogged up, they make a thing called a file cleaner and it looks like a wool carter and you just go across it and it helps remove any junk that has plugged up uh, the cuts. Now they also have diamond files. Um, those are good for more fine work, I feel. And also um, once the grit, the metal gets super hot and then they dip it in the this powdered diamond bits and then that it gets fused to the surface of the metal and helps as an abrasive but um and once that grit's gone it's not super useful after that i mean you can do stuff with that but that's a different a different project for a different day all right so i've got this 10 gauge heavy duty bronze wire. If we want to be precise in our pendant, we can always bust out the ruler and measure things. I don't want to manipulate this wire any more than I have to. And one of the reasons why I'm telling you this is because if you start straightening and unstraightening and bending and manipulating this wire, what you're doing is called work hardening it. And that's normally not a problem. However, to solve work hardening, you have to anneal the wire to make it soft again so that it's more pliable. However, with metals like bronze, it can really kind of oxidize in funky ways that it doesn't shine up in the same way. So you have to do certain things to adjust the patinas. So what I recommend is don't fuss with it too much. Don't be straightening it and unstraightening it and flattening it and doing all kinds of stuff because in, you can inadvertently make your job a lot harder than it needs to be. So depending on how long you make your piece of initial wire, will depend on how big your pendant or if you scaled this down, earrings will be. So if you um, want a pendant that's approximately two inches or so long, you'll probably wanna aim for around four inches um, so that you can, um, when you fold it over, you'll get the length that you need, all right? And I will say that when you're working with uh, thicker gauge wire like this, it's easier to work in longer lengths. If you start trying to manipulate an inch of this wire, it's possible, it's definitely possible, but it's much, much more of a headache. So save yourself the headache and don't cut off too short of a piece because then you'll be like, why did I do this to myself? Why do I hate myself? 
All right. So I'm just going to roughly guesstimate and um, use two hands and firmly cut it like so. Um, they do have better um, cutters for, for thicker gauge wire. Um, they do a shearing action. This is kind of like in between a shear and a fine piece or a fine edge. Um, with fine edge stuff, if you cut it, it will kind of, it can ding up and dent and cause, um, dents in your blade edge and then it makes it hard to use that again so if you can find one that has a shearing action and what i mean by a shearing action is like this with a fine edge it's like this but a shearing action is like this it's kind of like the difference between a memory wire cutter and something like this all right um bonnie says i don't have a cutter like that either i gotta go to the hardware store yeah um, I like it if you're going to, especially if you're going to work with heavier gauge wire. This is bronze wire, so it's a harder wire. If you're using like a craft wire um, that's like an aluminum core, then you can do it with your fingers, basically. The problem with that is that uh, it's not going to be as structurally as robust as a piece that has been, um, that you can work hard in. All right, so I've got these ends here and I'm going to just do some really um, basic and kind of preliminary cleanup work on these pieces. Now notice, I'm bracing the other end on the bench block. If I was at my regular jeweler's bench, I would have the jeweler, the bench pin, and I would have this right in that little crook, that little that little V shape in your bench block so that it can hold this still. Notice I'm creating three points of connection. So here, here, and here. That's gonna give you the most stable holding ability possible. If you hold it like this, you might as well, it's not going to remove as much material. So hold it in three places. That's going to, and have three points of connection, and that's going to give you the most sturdy uh, hold. Now you also notice I'm going in one direction, and I'm filing it just the ends like so. And what this is, is files work on the push, not on the pull. Sometimes I'll go back and forth, um, that's not great technique. However, sometimes if you're working in a small space, it's good to have that sense of rhythm, which I find is more difficult if you're just, if you're going in one direction on the push, which is the cutting side, um, sometimes it's hard if you're not, if you're not used to it. Um, I can also adjust this, the angle of this, so that if this is the end, I'm going to go like this and smooth it up. If I, you know, there's a lot of different techniques about filing, but right now we're just going to remove any burrs. So sometimes when you cut metal, there's little boogers that get left over from the cutting and um, they're called burrs. So I just want to smooth this up. It's going to take a little bit extra time. Uh, and we're going to have to file again later. But um, I think it, it, it makes it easier. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be flaring out the metal um, a little bit. Not a, a ton. But we're going to flare it out just a little bit so that whenever we make a coil on top of this, it's not going to get... It's not going to slip over that end, all right? So what I'm doing is I'm just going over and filing the edge down, getting rid of any burrs. There are some really cool things that are out there right now. And they're like, it's basically like a pencil sharpener for wire. And you can go in and deburr stuff super fast. I don't have one of those. I feel like 
I wouldn't be able to, you know, it's kind of, I don't want to say it's not a good product, but it's kind of one of those gimmicky products that you'll use like two times and then you'll realize you could have done the same thing with a file. Um, it does take a little bit longer to do this with a file, but it's all handwork. And I feel like doing handwork is, is, it's sometimes not awesome. It's like kind of tedious, but I think if you put time and energy into it, um, it shows in your finished piece. Um, and so you end up avoiding problems down the line if you do it like that, as opposed to kind of just rushing and having sharp points later on then you you'll have less of a headache later on if that makes any sense all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my ruler and i'm going to measure this and i see that i am just about oh this if i straightened it out it would be about um four and a half inches or so and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, do two and a quarter, and that's going to be my little center center mark. Now, if you want to use pliers for this part, you can definitely use pliers. I might resort to pliers later, but I'm going to try to do some strong arming for you and hopefully not embarrass myself tremendously. So what you want to do is make sure that whenever you're doing something with like body ergonomics, your feet are flat on the floor, shoulder width apart, your elbows are tucked in, and you've got your arms braced. Now, that may sound like I'm overthinking things, but if you want to get even pressure and have the most mobility uh, later on, then you'll kind of think about your body mechanics like so. It's kind of weird because I'm doing this on camera and I can't really kind of get in the position that I would like to be. But again, elbows tucked in close to your core and um, feet flat on the ground, shoulder width apart, and you're going to use that and use that strength. All right. So you can see it's not quite perfect. Um, I probably did not find the best center mark. I found the center mark here, but really it should have probably been a little bit over. Oh, wow. But once you get it on there, it's pretty tough, y'all. Once you bend this, it's going to be rough. It's going to be hard to, to do that. All right, so I've noticeably, I messed up on purpose. No, I didn't. But um, one thing you can do is you can find a straight edge and find that, go perpendicular, and then you can find your mark. And notice, since I marked it on this side and I have the ruler, the mark is really going to be over on this side. So, um. That's where measuring, I guess, helps. And normally I would hold my hand over that so it doesn't shoot up and go into my eyeball, but it was aimed away from me and I wasn't around other people, so. That's good. But this bronze wire, since it's heavier gauge wire, it's not as easy to manipulate unless you anneal it. The thing about annealing it is that sometimes it creates this oxidation that makes it tricky to get that gold color, that warm, rich gold color back. And then you're like, oh, it looks kind of not the way I wanted it to. So bronze is kind of fickle like that, but there are different things that you can do um, to get that kind of warm, rich glow back, but you do have to do a lot more polishing and it's easier just to do it now instead of waiting. 
All right. Um, cases, you don't wear safety glasses when you work with heavy gauge hardware. Uh, normally I do, but I didn't put them on. Um, and anyways, if you, I have enough experience that if I'm cutting something, I know which direction it's going to go. But that is an excellent point. Wear safety glasses. Um, I was being lazy because they're in the other room, but you should definitely wear safety glasses whenever you're doing any kind of metal smithing. Um, and that is a definitely good thing to, to, to be used to and have a part of your, your making. All right, so I've got this. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bend this in a little bit more. As you can see, it's getting to the point where it's a little bit tricky to bend this. And so I've got kind of an upside down U shape and I've got this bench block. And what I'm gonna do is um, with a, this is a ball peen this is more of what people think of when they think of ball peen. This is a peen, which is a ball on the end. So that's why it's called the ball peen. This is the chasing face. And there's two different kind of blows that you can get from something like this. This, it flares the metal out. And then this compresses it. So um, if I was gonna draw this out for you, If I have any pieces of paper. Um, so when you have a hammer blow, if this is the flat face of a hammer and it goes down and you have your, your bench block or your anvil, it's going to want to go like this, right? So you're compressing whatever's in between. When you have a ball peen or a rounded face, what's going to happen is when this strikes down, the force is gonna go out like this. So um, it's stretching the metal outward like that. So this is a compression blow and this is an expansion blow. Now, if you really want to spread the metal out fast, you would find a curved surface like this, and then you aim that like that, and it will make it able, it's called drawing out the metal. All right, and that's a quicker way. However, if you don't have a very good hammer control and you don't have the right setup, just do it like this and then flip it every once in a while, and um, it'll, you know, you'll get the same kind of um, action. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold at the base of this hammer. Um, these are called, when it flares out like this, this is called a pistol grip. This isn't a true pistol grip, um, but it does have a swell in the hammer and that's gonna be for your ergonomics. So if you do a lot of this, it helps. So I'm just gonna flare this out a little bit on the tip. Um, ideally, I would have this positioned over the, the leg of a table so that it doesn't bounce. I'm actually just gonna move this over. And that way it's getting the force up from uh, the base. And you can already see, I've just tapped it, tapped it, tapped it, and it's already flaring out. A lot of times people think that when you're hammering, you have to hammer it like you're He-Man and you have to wail the hell out of it. But the truth is you don't have to use as much force. 
Now, a trick that I've been learning in blacksmithing is that if you get your if you get your piece closer to the edge, like so, and you kind of hold it up, it creates a natural kind of um, uh, you don't want to hold it up though because you can pinch yourself. But if you go towards the edge, you're going to be able to um, flare it out in a much more successful way. I guess it doesn't matter with this such small scale. Normally, I would hold it like this, an angle. But since I don't want to accidentally pinch my fingers, I'm just going to do it like this. Now, one thing you may notice is I'm holding it like this. Don't hold it like this because that reverberation will send that energon up into your, your muscle or your joint here, and then the pain time happens. So hold it like so. Generally speaking, I move the metal, not the hammer. But again, this is such a small scale that it's hard not to do that. So Bonnie says, I also need a bigger bench block. Yeah, if you, if you want to upgrade, it is helpful to do larger scale stuff. But you can do the same technique that I'm doing on one of those little mini uh, bench blocks or mini anvil. All right. So you should see, you can see it's creating a nice paddle and it's nice and smooth on each side. You'll notice that I move this off to the side of the bench block. I'm holding it at an angle like so. And so this way I'm not getting pinched. I'm, I've got it off to the side here. Now, one thing that we're doing while we're hammering it is we're work hardening our piece. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a couple light blows and do that. And that's gonna help retain the shape. It's also gonna create a slight facet around the edges. And the reason why that's important is for the wiring that we're gonna do next, um, it helps it from slipping. If you wanted to get decorative, you can take and use the ball peen, but just remember you're flaring the metal out. So if you are doing that, kind of um, apply a little bit of pressure while you're doing that. And as this spreads out, this is going to want to spread also. So if you don't want this to spread out and become more of like a bell shape and you want it to be more of a U shape, Keep your fingers pinched on either side and then do it. Um, and that will help it retain its shape. I'm just going to do some really light blows. This is not anything to move metal. It's just for the decorative texture at this point. And I'm going to do that on the back side as well so that it matches. But this way, you you don't have to constantly anneal your metal. Um, annealing is great, but if you don't have a torch, this is a good way to do it so you're not um, messing up your piece. You know, you don't have to keep keep doing the annealing over and over and over again. All right, so I've got this shape. You're probably like, what? I'm going to feel my tips again, nice and relatively smooth. I'm going to just go over again with a, the smoother file and knock down any other sharp edges that might have happened during the flaring out part portion of this. 
because I don't want, because sometimes when you flare this out, it gets real sharp. Any kind of imperfections in the end gets magnified when you, you flare it out. So like if you have something like this, and this is the end of the wire, and you have a little nick in like this, if you flare this out and you use your ball peen hammer to, to flare it out to make it into a paddle, this nick will look like this. It will grow. So the thing that is good to do is file this down beforehand, nice and smooth, so when that you when you do ha hammer it out, it will re remain smooth, and you won't have this. Um, the other thing about this is if you if you file it out here beforehand, then you won't have to grow the metal. It won't grow. The size of this won't grow, and you won't have to remove all this fine metal. So basically, to make it even, you have to basically start over. So it's easier just to do that earlier on. If you don't do it, it's not going to be the end of the world. It's just going to be a little bit sharper. And you're going to have to do a little bit more cleanup work and more filing and more, more things like that. So just keep that in mind. Oh, hi, Julie. Julie's watching. And I'm just lightly filing this. And that's going to take off any sharp edges and make our piece nice to wear. It'd be nice to feel. I like it when your jewelry feels nice. Sometimes the jewelry, like especially a lot of the more like art jewelry um, and the more like avant garde kind of stuff is not necessarily wearable and while i can see the point of doing that sometimes i like if i'm gonna make a piece for it to feel good um and then that'll be nice you know it feels nice all right um bonnie says that she made some earrings with a sterling silver wire with this shape oh good now if you wanted to um, I would say if you want to flare this out more, you can. There's plenty of material to do that. If you do decide to do that, I would say anneal the tips of the, the wire. And, and you can also ball up the ends of the wire beforehand if you want it to be really big, like really big paddles. But for now, I kind of like them like this. Um, and I think that that's a nice, good, strong kind of wishbone. Um, cases, if it's not wearable, what's the point of jewelry? Finishing is everything. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different um, ideas. Um, so there are pieces like Alexander McQueen. Um, he made some pieces using razor clam shells and they basically broke and became j more jagged as the model walk but we wouldn't have those beautiful silhouettes and those um conceptual ideas um so i mean there's a lot of different ways of making so it just depends on the thing that you want to do with your work but um i'm never going to disparage somebody else for making something that I don't necessarily make them myself because there's a lot of I you know ways of making things and so that's another conversation for another day. Um, all right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get this brass wire and I'm going to cut off a good healthy amount. You can tell this is kind of a springy. It's a half hard wire. Um, it's just a craft wire, um, brass wire. I, and the reason why I'm not showing the end of this is because I don't think this company is in business anymore. So, um, uh, I'm, I don't want to show anybody and people be like, oh, I can't find it. Just look for 24 gauge brass wire and lots of stuff will come up. All right. So I've got my tip end of my wire. I've got my round nose pliers. 
and I'm going to bend this over and I'm going to create basically a hook. Can you see that hook? And I'm gonna take this hook and I'm going to hook that around the metal like so, all right? And I'm going to bend this around and then I'm gonna use my pliers because my pliers can get into places my fingers can't. And also when I'm manipulating the wire, it can get super sharp on the end and I don't wanna inadvertently cut myself. So I'm just gonna take the extra time to use pliers. You can use your fingers, but then when you go to slice the limes for the margarita, you know, then might be the, the stinging ouchy time. So avoid the stingy ouchy time, use the pliers. They're not super, these ones are kind of expensive, but generally speaking, chain of pliers are not necessarily expensive and you can, um, you know, use them for what they're designed for. All right, so the key for this not to fall apart is to make sure that your first um, anchoring coil is pretty tight. If it's really loosey-goosey style, it's going to show and you're gonna have problems later on. All right, so then the next thing is, is you can do um, create your own pattern with these beads. I'm gonna focus on kind of glass beads. Um, and I'm going to try to get it so that, um, that I can get that the shape I want and keep it um, from going too far up because I want to be able to hang, have a place to hang something, but I don't want to go too far down. If you wanted to make a bigger piece, you could definitely do that. But I want also kind of, um, I'm going to play with symmetry, you know, maybe. I'll take that, this one off for now. And I'm going to re-put this one. And I think it's one of those things where if you get the dis the pattern right, it um, it can do a lot. If you make a mistake, it can do a lot to cover that mistake up. Not that we're making mistakes, but um, it's one of those things where it's a graphic element that people will be able to see readily. All right, so I've got that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna twist this around I'm also going to make sure that I'm being fairly secure in my coil making. And then after I get down into it, I'm going to squeeze these coils to make them nice and tight, making sure that they're um, uh, nice and tight and secure. And then I'm going to go down to the next row. And so what I'm gonna do is I kind of come off here like so. So I'm making kind of a swirly and then I'm gonna come back over like so. If I wanted to, I could add coils here, but I kind of want that to be like a swirly. Well, I'll just do coils here so it looks more even. And I'm coiling it three times, but it's up to you how many times you coil it. And then I'm gonna come back over. I'm gonna string up my beads before I attach the ones on the other side. And I'm gonna use those to kind of create the second row. Okay, so say your working wire is coming from under your piece. Uh, it doesn't necessarily matter um, because it just depends on how you best weave. Some people like to have it on top. I like to have it come under and then do over. Um, just for my ergonomics, it's easier for me to wrap away from myself than towards myself.
So, and then I'm going to do the third row. And it's kind of like an abacus if you look at it. Maybe I'll put this one, this white one. Now, I've also got this where I've pinched this in a little bit. So you have to take that into consideration also when you're laying your design out because you're not going to get as many beads or play, room to play as you are in the, the base one or up at the top. All right. So I'm going to lock this in place and make sure it's relatively even, and then wrap again. Making sure that's nice and secure. And if there's any kind of weeble wobbling, like this one's a little bit weeble wobble, I can go back in and uh, twist the wire around. I'm not gonna cut the wire yet because if I need extra wire, I don't wanna have to redo everything. Um, and I know why this is happening because I, I pressured this to go down um, and uh, some of that tension got away from it. All right. And then once I get that kind of down, then I'm going to go close to the edge here. Actually, I'm going to take one of these off and go close to the edge and I'm going to cut it. And I've got the flush side down. And then I'm going to take my chain of pliers. I'm going to wrap this around so it's nice and secure and bent inwards. And it's not going to get snagged up on, on things. All right. And then you can futz around with it a little bit more and get everything kind of situated the way you want it. But I think that's pretty cute. um super simple and you can make these into earrings i use thinner gauge wire so that they're not like you know uh super heavy duty on your ears but i think that's super cute if you wanted to you could also embellish this further with more wire or you could also go around the outside edge and embellish it like that um but it's kind of like a little fun abacus and you uh, it's like a fidget spinner though for adults i know i would play with this if i wore this um so there you go. There's that. Now, if you wanted to, there's a lot of different variations that you could do to this to embellish it or change it up. If you flare these out enough, you could drill a hole in the ends and then hang things off of the ends. You could, like I said, go on the outside perimeter and do it. I'm going to try another one. If you all want to hang out, then hang out. But... If not, then don't. Oop. But so I'm going to do this in real speed. Where's that paintbrush? Um, a real ish speed. I'm going to bend, that, get that out of the way so I'm not. Another thing you can do is you can put something underneath it to collect the dust, even a piece of paper. And then that can help you when you come when it comes to cleanup time. You can use this for for um, cleanup makes it a little bit easier when it comes down to the end. Okay, so this is a nice pendant, thanks. It's super easy. I've shown variations of this in the past. Uh, I won an award a long time ago, probably 12 years ago. I did a design like this with Labradorite. Um, and I won, I think it was a competition. 
But this is an ancient technique, really. Um, but it's really popular right now. I've seen a bunch of people um, doing this, and it's nice because it's visually satisfying and relatively easy. So one of the things about mixing the metal um, is that it adds a little bit um, of a difference. Like there's a little bit of a design element when it comes into this this kind of yellow green brass in contrast to this warmer shade of bronze. So I think that adds another little element um, when it comes to, to that, like that contrast of metals. Um, you know, it, when you're doing mixed metals, it doesn't have to be super jarring, like, mixing silver and gold, which I do all the time, but, um, you know, some people are not into that. Um, but this is a nice way of doing mixed metals without hit it being something that like hits you over the face. Bonnie said, so did you have this um, design in mind when you purchased the beads? Um, not really. Um, Sometimes what I do is, like for the global adventure stuff, I kind of go by different, I start researching different beads from different geographic areas. And um, that helps inform how I purchase those beads and make those kits or mixes. But then like with this pattern, um, I've been doing this kind of design for a long time and I used to sell these all the time. Um, if you have the ability to do this with a machine where you just go zip is super fast. Um, it's more it's much faster than doing it this way. but you know you get your practice in with with filing. I like to show people the hard arduous way first. And then if there's an easier way, then I'll show them the easier way. But it's good to get those kind of basic skills in so that when you, you know, when you do other things, you can take those basics and grow those as opposed to, you know, being reliant on um, only being able to do something if you have that equipment. Because, like, what if the power goes out? Like I could not do the, you know. So this is a better uh, example of precisely eyeballing. The last one, I got a little bit wonka doodle. This one, much, much better. And if I wanted to, I could flare this out. The only thing that is you want to be careful not to mar up your wire. I mean, if you do, it's not the end of the world. But, um, you know, you don't have to do a bunch of cleanup. So this is a variation on that first one. And then I'm going to take this over on the bench block positioned over the end of this.
Now, if I really want to get in there, I can move to the smaller tab. And that hammered look gives it a very forged uh, look, like forged, like made with a fire and hammer, as opposed to like you're faking something. Now, speaking of protection, if you're doing a lot of hammering, I'd recommend getting some earplugs or uh, or ear muffs so that you, you're not damaging your hearing. Um, whenever I do raising of vessels, it's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of hammering. So I wear my ear protection. I already have, I don't know if you all know this or not, but I'm already, um, I'm hearing impaired in one of my ears. It's not super super bad because I can still hear, but there are certain sounds I can't hear out of that ear. So whatever I can do to protect that, what I have left, all the better, right? But I guess you wouldn't notice it unless you were in, with, in person necessarily, because I will, I'll turn to my good ear to face the person. All right. I always do that kind of springy. I test the springiness of it to see if I need to work hard in it at all. And then, of course, I'm going to come back in and file this again so it's nice and smooth and I don't have any sharp points that are going to uh, mess up my nice silk blouse. Oh, Cindy's watching. Hey, Cindy. She liked and shared our post. Thank you, Cindy. We appreciate it. Um, I had a post earlier that I posted, and there was a link in the comment section on my personal timeline. And um, uh, Meta is doing this crackdown on posts that have outside links to them, uh, especially to um, selling sites like Shopify. So it seriously reduces the ability for my posts to be seen, but also like, I don't know what to do. Like how they, they're trying to do it so that you have to uh, go through them as a, as a processor. And while I'm not opposed to that, I don't necessarily want all of my business to only be conducted only exclusively on Facebook, you know? So it always helps when people like and comment and share because it shows the algorithm that people want to see this content. Now, if there's any kind of wonka doodle things where I, if there's any dips, I can take that over and flip that and sort out anything. Again, I'm not hitting it super hard. I don't, the goal is not to like pulverize it. It's so that I can um, work hard in it and add that kind of hammer texture. And then also, um, you know, have it be nice. 
and not super bendy, bendy delicious. So I think what I'm going to do eventually is I'm going to have this piece or one of the pieces kind of in between like that. What do you all think of that? I like that. So I'm going to have to pry this apart just a wee bit. And then, so what I'm going to do, which is different than what I did the last time. Is I'm going to take this and find the center mark of this. I'm not going to bend it too aggressively because if you bend it too aggressively, you're not going to be able, it's not going to nestle into that V really nice. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to nestle that in there like that. And then I'm going to come around and anchor this. Actually, I'm not going to anchor it just yet. Um, I'm going to put this in there and kind of do this lightly. And then once I get both sides of it done, then I'm going to anchor it much more firmly like so and then i can take this and do those coils like i saw out earlier and this is kind of a, a thing going working in the reverse but at the same time and then i'm going to tighten up these coils and I'm going to move this a little bit up so that it's in between these. Turn it over and adjust the coils on the back side. Sometimes it's good to flip things over while you're working so you can see, you know, and there's nothing more disappointing when you get to, you're almost finished with something and then you flip it over and then it looks like poop on the back. So um, it's always good to kind of look at your work from different angles. And then um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of these roundish beads and um, I'm gonna do kind of an outside um, look. So wrap this around and I'm using my fingers for this, uh, but if I get to a point where I, I'm getting close to the end of the wire, I might adjust it differently. Um, and again, this is one of those things where I think sometimes you have to let the wire, you know, play around with the wire and see what you can see because like you may have some like a different look, you know, you may find, you know, play around with it and see if you like a certain look. And then if you like something better, then you can just do it. But um, that's how you kind of wander into kind of design solutions as opposed to always knowing. You can do things where you draw things out. And I definitely do that myself. But I also do things where I play around. And I let that play inform my design decisions where I can do different things and, um, you know, you kind of uh, discover different ways of doing things that way. Bunny, so that looks like an octopus. Let's see that. Um. Yeah, so hopefully you all are having fun. I'm getting to the point in this where we're coming close to the end of our time together today. But I just wanted to say that I enjoyed spending time with you today. So thank you all for watching and hanging out with me. Um, we know there's a lot of different choices out there when it comes to the content that you consume. So we always appreciate it when our people uh, pick us. It's not, it's a good feeling to know that uh, people want to see what you have to show. So thank you for hanging out with us. 
Um, I might do a work with me video later tonight. It depends on um, how much work I have to get done. But if I do end up doing a work with me video, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I might just stream it here on to everywhere. Now, if you don't know what the work with me videos are, it's basically me just working and not talking. Of course, I'm one short. Oh, there it is. Um, and yeah, so uh, those work with me videos, generally speaking, um, I don't do any talking while uh, it's different than like a tutorial because I'm not necessarily showing you how to do things, but I do, we do them so that people, if you're working on a project, then you can kind of have it in the background and kind of hang out. Um, so I think it's, I don't know, I think they're dreadfully boring, but William says that people like them. So um, we'll see. All right, so I've made, I've taken two different ways of doing this. And um, I can tighten this up just a wee little bit. Um, Bonnie said, did you get the kittens? No, they come at the end of the month. So here are two different varieties using the similar techniques. And if you wanted to, I guess you could make something that fit inside there and you could wire that on there. Or I don't know, put it upside down. Play around with that. You know, think about it in a different way. So there are different options that you could then take and do more with them if you wanted to embellish them more. And could definitely do it where you have that. I kind of like this where that loop and this loop creates an eye shape. So I don't know. If I wanted to, I could definitely tack this down with some wire and have a different structure, you know? So in the meantime, I've got them like this individually. So to use this in a functional way, I would probably get two, oh, you could use one jump ring, but I would probably get two jump rings and on either side and then have them be like that. I don't know. This one I think needs something. It's missing something. I think it's missing something big. Something big bigger, I don't know. That's kind of neat. And there you go, that's the tutorial for tomorrow. <laughs> no. Um, but I do think that that's kind of a cool shape. I do like that. So I don't know, sometimes I look at stuff after I've made it and then look at it from a different perspective um, because then you can see different things. They'll inspire new designs. That could be cool. Have that hang in between there like that. I don't know. At this point, I'm just moving stuff around the page, as they say. But sometimes I think that's good. It's helpful to get different design ideas. So if I did something, I'd probably do have the focus be around here. And then um, I do. I keep coming back to this. I do like that. So who knows? Probably not, but who knows? You never know. I think it's good to see and experiment. And then if you like something, you can do it. If you don't like it, you can always take it apart. The nice thing about these is that this is all the mix that's left over. And I only use this many. And I think I've created two successful designs with very few beats. 
and inexpensive materials, but as I think they are visually very attractive. So you could definitely, you know, you can do a lot with a little bit. Um, sometimes people say that our prices are too high. And um, I think one of the things is, is that, you know, you can, a lot of the things that we do, we put them together in a way that you can get the most bang for your buck. And so, I don't know, I think we're comparably priced and that um, what we sell is worth what it, we charge. Um, sometimes we sell things for much lower than we probably should, but I don't know. I think that it's a, we do a good job offering that and giving value for what you get. Um, but yeah, so made two pendants today, use very few of the beads in the mix and use materials that are not expensive. The most expensive things that are from, that I use are the hammers and uh, the pliers. But if you wanted to do this for much more inexpensively, you could definitely 100% do it. And, um, you know, using other things that won't break the bank, All right? So I'm going to flip this around and we'll, I'll say goodbye. Howdy. So hopefully you had a good time. This would be cute as, as long earrings, I think. This one I think is more successful as an earring design. These would work too, but it's up to you. You could even flip these and put them around, make a little, little headdress style, whatever you wanna do. You could wire this together and make a little cuff. That'd be super cute. If you made a bunch of these and wired them together, maybe alternating down and then up and then link them together maybe with the jump rings there you go lots of different ideas so that you i also want to empower people so that they don't feel like they have to do exactly what i do um because i know sometimes people feel have weird feel mixed feelings about that and i do too sometimes like sometimes i like to go and I like to learn a technique, but I don't necessarily want to make what the teacher is making. Um, so I think it's good when you can kind of look at something, a very simple something that they put together or a technique and then make it your own. And I think that's where another value point comes in. Um, and I think even if you wanted to turn this into a ring, you could make this into a really cool cocktail ring you know, don't, don't sneeze and, and poke your eye out. Um, but this could be, you know, there's a lot of options here um, for things that you could do to make some really cool, unique designs, taking this very simple flaring technique and finishing technique and wiring technique and then you could make something your your own, which I think is very valuable. So anyways, um, yeah. So if you haven't had a chance, head on over to the website, that's allegorygallery.com. There are more of these Turkey Global Adventure Kits available, mixes. So if you want that, it also comes with an AG Fine Pewter toggle and an eye shape um so we would appreciate that because i have a lot of those extra and i don't know why i love them but some people are not into them um so anyways you could definitely do that if you wanted to if you didn't like the eye motif you could definitely switch it out and you have a completely different look um so we have those available on the website. That's allegorygallery.com. And we also, if you didn't see the Storyteller collection, I'm very proud of that and the work that got put into that. 
So um, check those out if you haven't already. All right. Have a great night, everybody. Um, I'll see you back tomorrow with another tutorial or something. And I don't know what we're going to show tomorrow, but um, William's ceramic class is kind of a new development. So I don't know. But um, if you have any requests, you can let us know. And yeah, I can um, maybe do it. We'll see. You never know. All right. Have a great night, everybody. See ya.